and we will finish up with total runout. Last time we looked at circular runout with the single arrow in our feature control frame for rotating parts where the indicator is just planted in one spot and records the needle movement. Then it's moved to another spot. That's circular runout. With total runout, we're controlling and measuring the variation across the entire surface. Here's the back flat surface of this rotating part. As the part rotates, that indicator will be moved back and forth, uh, covering that whole flat surface. Here on the cylindrical part, the indicator goes back and forth. And on the tapered part, the indicator goes back and forth along the taper as the part is spinning. If you have a part that is a cylinder, then the shape of the tolerance zone is two coaxial cylinders. Coaxial is uh, similar to concentricity. If you have two flat circles, they are concentric. If you have two cylinders that share the same center line, they or same axis, they are coaxial. A lot of people say concentric, though. So for a cylindrical part, the tolerant zone is two coaxial cylinders. If you're controlling runout on a flat surface, as they are here, then the tolerant zone is two parallel planes within which all the bumps must lie. Here is a cylindrical part where they are controlling total runout on the big diameter. So here when we look over on the right side we see the indicator being moved back and forth along that surface as the part is rotated. Notice that this drafter decided to use the shaft that's sticking out at A and the shaft that's sticking out at B as a compound datum because apparently this is how this part fits in whatever machine it's in. So they put an A-B in the feature control frame. We're seeing three different iterations of the part on this slide because they are showing us three possible places we could put the feature control frame. We could attach it to a leader and point at the surface. We could stick it to an extension line off the surface. Or we could put it with the diameter dimension. That's what's unusual about runout. You can stick it to a surface or a feature of size dimension it's all good. However, run out always means contact the surface. Here are two other examples stuck to an extension line or coming out of a diameter dimension. Another thing that's unusual about run out tolerances, unlike other kinds of controls is that the runout tolerance can be bigger than the size tolerance as well as being a refinement of the size tolerance. You'll remember that with things like flatness, the flatness tolerance is always a refinement of the size tolerance. The flatness tolerance is always a smaller number than the size tolerance. Well, here in the example on the left, we are seeing a size tolerance on the diameter dimension of plus or minus five thousandths. But in the runout control, we are seeing a tolerance zone that's fifteen thousandths. So that's bigger than the size tolerance. In the part on the right, things are more like they are with other kinds of geometric controls. The size tolerance is plus or minus ten thousandths, and in this part, 
the total runout is a tolerant zone that is 6,000, so it's a refinement. But what this is saying is that you can go either way. So here on this slide is that same part again where the runout tolerance is bigger than the size tolerance. And then here on the right is the other example where the runout tolerance is a small number relative to the size tolerance. And here is a, in the lower right is a picture of that dial indicator continuously moving back and forth across the surface as the part rotates. Inspecting runout is fairly easy. Um, the inspector will pay close attention to what you've put as datums and that's how they will set up for inspecting. Here is a part that, I don't know what this is, it might be a machine pin or something. Uh, it has a large diameter that has a total runout applied to it. And there's a datum A, the small shaft or the pin, has a datum A identifier applied to it and so this is saying that the center axis of the small diameter is datum A and there are no other datums. So the inspector puts just um, the small diameter shaft into a V block and let's say they rotate it by hand while moving the indicator probe back and forth across the surface. Here's a different part. In the upper left we see an exploded view of where this shaft might be used. Uh, some kind of, I don't know what this is for, um, it reminds me of uh, flat belts in, in uh, factory machinery from the 1930s. I used to work on a machine that was like that, but I don't know what this one is supposed to be. Anyhow, there's a, a stepped shaft inside this wheel, and it fits inside a bushing on each end, and then goes through this hole over here. So if that's how that shaft functions in its assembly, the drafter decided they were going to use a compound datum again. So they would make the small shaft on the left end and the small shaft on the right end together be the compound datum around which this part will rotate as the inspector checks this flat surface on the left, this flat surface on the right, and the cylindrical surface along the length of the big diameter. To simulate this compound datum, the inspector will put that shaft in between two V-blocks and rotate the part while moving this indicator probe up and down or back and forth along the shaft. And with this total runout control, we are controlling the amount of vibration that this shaft will see as it rotates.